This video may contain affiliate links. If you buy any tools or parts through those links, I may get paid a small commission. This is an iPad 7 motherboard. And uh, one of the services that I offer is that if you can remove the motherboard from your device, you can send in just that. That'll save you a little bit on the labor fees for disassembly and putting it back together. So this one is not charging properly. Uh, one thing about the iPad 7 to note is that there are several reasons that it may not charge. It is not always the charge port specifically on this model. They have other issues right in this area here under the CPU, under the charging IC, and under the power management IC. But if you have one of these, which I've showed in previous videos, um, if you can't see that this is physically damaged from the outside or that it's cracked along the edge on the inside of the charge port, you can use this device along with a multimeter, and I'll show you right now why I'm relatively confident that even though I don't see any damage, it is the charge port that uh, is probably the issue here. So we'll take this, and if we put the red probe on number eight right here, this is our ground. You could also put it over here on the Wi-Fi IC if you wanted to. But we should have a number everywhere except for occasionally on number four. Sometimes this is going to be OL. You can see on number one, we've got 70, oh, 728, 30 rising, actually, which is kind of different because I think this is supposed to be lower than that. But right over here, we've got 991, which is very odd. That's not something you'll normally see. And over here, we've got an OL. So we know that we have at least one open line. Uh, let's see, 720, 903. That's really an odd number in 900. So um, this is most likely the charge port. And I say that because of the open line that we have right here. We should have something. Oh, now we got 900 again. Yeah, so this thing's just kind of all over the place. So I suspect that we have a fracture along here somewhere. I'm hoping that's the case. But I wanted to show you the easiest way to replace this. Uh, even if you're a beginner, hopefully this will help you. I do recommend you practice on something that you don't really care about too much. But this is the safest way I know of to replace this port. All right, so one thing that we're going to do is remove this little piece of tape right here that goes across the back side of the charge port. And if you do have a multimeter, it's not a bad time to test and see if you're getting 5 volts coming in here. But in this case, we are going to replace this regardless. So what I'm going to also recommend you do is you'll see there's a little piece of glue right here in the corner. So if you just kind of hold on to this over here, you want to brace it. You don't want to put any tension on these yet. Hold this down and you can kind of just flex this thing backwards until it breaks through that little glue that's holding it there. That way you're not fighting this when you remove it. Now the next thing we're going to do, and I'm going to actually flip this around the opposite direction here. So we're going to put some leaded solder uh, first flux and then a whole bunch of leaded solder along the top here and that's going to reduce our melting point temperature for when we remove this. So we'll go ahead and start by putting some flux right across here. We'll get some leaded solder and we're just going to coat this. You see I have a big ball of solder there, and I'm just going to go back and forth. Now let's get this in something a little more stable. And instead of using our iron, I am actually going to use some hot air. And I'd use the temperature that I normally do for removing motherboard components, which is about 430C, but I'm going to turn my airflow up to about 70 liters per minute. And then we're going to get a pair of tweezers. And as soon as we see the solder start to melt, we can gently lift from here so you want to keep an eye on those solder joints wait till they liquefy and 
and then just very gently lift you shouldn't have to apply much force work your way across and there's a little adhesive holding on right now but as you can see that'll come off pretty smoothly as long as you take your time and don't put too much force now we'll go over these with our iron quickly And I'm not putting any pressure here. I'm just letting the solder that's underneath touch the pads. Right. So now we're going to clean this up. We'll just get the old flux off and I'm going to try to remove any residual adhesive because our port will come with its own. So as you can see, they just finally got the brilliant idea of punching a hole through this so you can see exactly where this needs to go. I'm actually going to take it out of the board holder because I like to work directly on the rubber mat with this at this point. Well, this is stable enough. So yeah, I don't know who thought this up, but this is the greatest idea ever. Now you can see exactly where these things line up. So we'll pull the adhesive off, and we're only going to put flux on the outside here of the port. And then we're just going to take our iron and go over this a couple times. Once we have it aligned, Stick that side down. Come on. And same over here. And then we just want to go across until all of these make contact. Now two notes, or one note I should say. It's not about what's on the outside. The solder that you add to the top of this will not help these bond. I should say they're not connected to the circuit, but it might help you flow the solder through a bit. As you can see, these are sticking just fine. If you want to add solder on the outside, you can, but it's usually not necessary. I just go over it a couple times until it looks like everything's on there sufficiently. And if you have any doubts, you can use your multimeter and test just to make sure that you have the right values and uh, ground and so forth. And this is 92% alcohol. All right, so now we can go back and confirm that we do have the correct diode mode readings here. And I'll copy these to the beginning of the video so you don't have to wait until now to see them.